Hey everybody, this is Mike with Denise. She's not ready, but I'm gonna talk while she's getting ready. Okay, we're doing a video here on credit scores. Everything you need to know about credit scores, what a credit score is. My hat's not even, wait, there. We're, we're on a hike. Uh, everything you need to know, what, what is a credit score? Why is it important? How do you improve it? How do you know? And do you even need one? We're gonna talk about like all these things, right? Yeah. All of them, and and Denise is our case study because I've known Denise now. We're we're married. And I've known her for like three and a half years or something like that. And the whole entire time she's known me, I've had a credit score that's been like there's a rock with a view. It's a, <laughs> well, not really much of a view, but we're still on our hike. My credit score, which is anywhere between I don't know, like 200, which I don't know if I've ever been seen a 200 that low. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred to almost depending upon the, the rating system, eight fifty to nine hundred is the highest you can get. Eight fifty is the highest it goes. Okay. Well <laughs> some some scores give you like nine hundred, I think. Uh, depending maybe on maybe you're thinking of a FICO score or something. <laughs> yeah, it might be like that. Yes. Your free bureau credit report only goes to eight fifty. That's the perfect score. Okay. <laughs> well mine's always been over eight hundred the whole time I've known her. And Denise's has not been. But let's talk about what is a credit score. My definition of a credit score is it is a report card on how well you handle money. I'd say that's the quickest and easiest definition. So the higher the better. Now, is it important to get a high credit score? Yes, if you intend to borrow money. No, if you don't intend to borrow money. Some people follow Dave Ramsey and he's like, oh, the way I teach you, you don't have to have credit cards. You won't even have a credit score. It won't matter. But that's only if you're never going to borrow money. Okay? He doesn't even know what his score is because he pays cash for everything. Yeah. Cars, houses, everything. What's he need a loan for? Yeah, but also, well, you don't. But, but, but what about insurance? Insurance yeah. sometimes rates bases your ratings they, on your credit score. They so almost all do. They do? It definitely affects your insurance rates. Okay, so, it, so even if you don't intend to borrow money, it's important to get your credit score as high as possible so that you save money on insurance if you ever have to pay for insurance. And you probably will. I think everybody has to pay for insurance at some point. Yeah. I think it's most effective on driving, right? If, Drive. if you own a home or rent, uh, rent an oh, apartment. Homeowners is, or, it, homeowners is a, yeah, a factor of that. Yeah. A car. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, so it's important. Yeah. Um, but of course, when you have a high score and you're borrowing money, if you choose to do that, you'll get the best rates and terms. That's the other thing. Definitely get better rates. The higher, the better. I think over about, once you get to about 800, it doesn't matter above that, I don't think. Unless somebody's gonna introduce some super high tier of like 840 and above or something, and maybe they will. You never know. So just keep it as high as you can. Just like trying to do well in school. You may not even need school, but it's gonna help you out if you, have, if you do well in school. Sorry, there's a fly in my, my glass here. Okay, so where did you start off? Denise, when I met you, I don't even remember. What was your credit score? Uh, well, let me start with before I met you. <laughs> okay. I had over a 700. You did? And then my daughter was car shopping, and she couldn't get the best rates. So I saw that if I co-signed for her, I could, because I had a 700. You always had a 700? Always? Not always. No, it fluctuates. It fluctuates okay. by the day. Yeah, well, I mean, was it <laughs> really in, bad? Because mine has always no. been... Like, I'd say over 740, like as far as I've ever been able to tell my score. The first time I checked it, it was like a 650. And then I got rid of some debt, and at one point it was around 700. That's when I co-signed my first loan for my daughter, and I had a car loan too. So that put me down, and a mortgage. actually, to about 680. Yeah, and a mortgage, right? Yeah, I had a mortgage and some credit cards. So, so, uh, so yeah, so your debt-to-income ratio was... Extremely no, the, high. The, the bureaus don't know about your income. They don't verify oh, your income. Okay. They look at the amount of available credit compared to what your utilization okay, is. Okay, so if you can get a credit card that has a $100,000 limit and you only use $10, then you have a... <laughs> then it's less than 1%. That'll help that, your credit score. That'll help your score, but that's only one factor out of four. But most people can't control themselves. You get a $100,000 credit card, you're going shopping for $100,000 worth of crap. <laughs> So right? the other three things that your score is dependent on is the number of inquiries in the past six months. So if you go car shopping, for example, and let them go hog wild, 
they might send, hog wild is that a vegan term they might send your application <laughs> your loan application out to six different banks at once that, that is going to make your credit score take a nosedive for about six months um the other factor so wait, so where were you back to what we were saying i'm going over the four factors oh okay <laughs> so <laughs> percent utilization number of inquiries in the past six months number of on-time payments um, I always make my payments on time. Always? And if I ever forget, I will forget. call. Like if I forget to pay my forget? electric bill. I've done it. Oh, you I've gone a on, few months? No, I've gone on vacation, <laughs> completely forgot about, what about my auto bills. Pay? How about auto pay? I'm on auto pay now. You should be on auto pay all the time. That way you never have to worry about it. For bills like payment. your electric that you're going to have to pay, right? Those, those are, yeah. those are well, mandatory. I'm able, I'm lucky enough that I'm able to pay my full balance on everything on auto pay, even on my regular Visa and MasterCard and American but, Express. You, but at some point, not too long ago, you were paying, you were making payments on your credit cards. You were yeah, not paying I off was. the balance. I was making That's more. another factor, right? If you're making payments, you're carrying, if you're carrying a balance, it's revolving. I think they, they know that too. Yes, your revolving balance makes a bigger impact than, say, a mortgage payment. Because so. revolving balance is basically a balance on shit that depreciates. It's depreciating assets that are going to be, in almost every instance, unless you're buying gold bars, they're going to be, <laughs> I don't think you can buy them on credit. You're going to be buying stuff that by the time you start using it, it's worth less than you paid for it. And then you still have to pay for it because you haven't paid for any of it. So, so it's not good to be, to have that kind of debt. That is very, very bad debt. And no debt is good. Okay, let me also say that. No debt is good. No debt is always better than some debt. There is no good debt, as far as I'm concerned, unless you have extra money to pay for it. Because in almost every case, people will justify good debt as being okay when they truly have a hard time making ends meet. And it's just going to strangle you. And it's going to lower your credit score. It's going to ratchet up your pressure, too, and your, your, um, your stress level, I think, right? Right. Is your stress so, level lower now than it was? Yeah. So the fourth factor in your credit score, well, Mike is done rambling here. Is, it's the coffee. Um, the length, uh, the age of your credit. So my, the average age of my credit cards is about 12 years. I have one account that I've had for 15 years. Here comes a mountain bike. A mountain bike? A mountain bike. Would you we get have, off the okay, trail? Yeah, okay, let's let him go. So, I wonder what that guy's credit score is. We should ask him. Is I it a guy? Mike, I had a, a, an account that had been open for about 15 years. And my interest rate was only... What? It was only 10%. So I wasn't in a big hurry to pay that off because I thought that was low compared to the other ones that had 24%. But Mike, you had 24% <laughs> credit card? You were paying 24%? 22, 24. Yeah. I, I mean, I carried a very small balance on them, but I didn't small pay with them small. off. <laughs> I mean, like 100 bucks. And you were I paying 24% pay. interest on 100 bucks? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't in any big hurry to pay off my card. You should listen to my song so. by Alabama. I'm in a hurry. So you're <laughs> rambling. I think you're losing the audience here. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, we are talking about finances. So Mike said, you when we first started dating and then we decided to show each other our credit we reports. We decided? No, actually I asked. <laughs> yeah. If yeah, you ever yeah. start dating someone, <laughs> the first thing you want to find out if it, if it might even be halfway serious is you want to get permission to pull their full credit report if you can. Not just a number, but the full report, which I can do because I'm in real estate property management I have access to. Yeah, uh, they could apply for a loan, I suppose, and pay the credit report and uh, a mortgage loan. You know, I do mortgage loans. Well, I don't do them, but I they require for some of my clients because not everybody has cash for a house. So I had nineteen thousand dollars in credit card debt. But he had a sixty thousand dollar mortgage that he didn't tell me about. Sixty thousand. He, he said he wasn't responsible for it. It was part oh. of the divorce agreement. Oh, actually, yeah. And then then my ex declared bankruptcy and then he had about to go a year court. later. Yeah, because she decided to not pay that anymore. You know, she's required. My name was still on it. That don't ever. Uh, I had a document where I was released from liability, but of course I still was dragged into bankruptcy court, and uh, it may or may not ever affect my credit. But I think it actually it won't because I think it was resolved. But yeah. that remains to be seen. We, I still don't know. I may never know on that until one day my credit takes a huge hit. Hey, we got a stream. Look, hold on, hold on. Where's the? Yeah, there's where? a mountain stream with a. Is that clear water? PVC pipe Oh, okay. I gotta let me flip. Can I flip this thing around? Well, I'm talking about credit, not water. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I gotta make sure I don't end up in the water here. There's the yeah. What's that PVC pipe? What is that about? 
I bet, I bet you someone's trying to get mountain stream water to a house. I bet it was one of those houses we saw. Yeah, there it goes, down to this. Yeah. That's actually some good water, good quality water. If you can get it. I think most people can't. So, I right. buckled date off my 19,000 Hold on a the camera's over here. I want to be on. I paid off that $19,000 worth of credit card debt in about a year. First thing I did was my, my daughter bought another car, so I was no longer a co-signer on that loan. That spiked my score up. <laughs> then my my lease ended. I made all my payments on time, so now I've got a bunch lease, of income. Lease? Wait, what, what lease? That a, a, on a car? A fleece. That's what Dave Ramsey calls it. A lease affects your credit fleece. the yeah, same it's a way fleece. a car loan So you had a fleece. You had a mortgage loan. You had consumer debt on your credit cards. You had cosign on your daughter's loan you had loans all yeah. over the place that's what i'm saying that's, that's, I mean, I'm, we're talking about a lot of money here a lot of different sources a lot so, of money so, and when i met mike my previous boyfriend had a couple of young kids and a, a large child support payment so so you I paid was, for everything i paid for all our dates what oh and my gosh car repairs <laughs> oh my god how do i when i what? met mike i still owed money on my American your ex-boyfriend money ex-boyfriend's car repairs <laughs> ex-boyfriend's yeah. car repairs he paid me back but it took him about a year <laughs> he paid okay he wait paid hold on so what was your credit score at the low around this time what was it like when it got Six, a low 50 650 <laughs> okay so you need at least like a 740 to get the best rates. Yeah. At least at the time of making this video. Who knows? They may, may say best rates are now 800, but generally it's 740. So that really affected your ability to refinance any of your stuff. Yeah. Uh, you have student loans too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you have, you have loans all over the place. So now I, uh, I paid all the high interest stuff off. Now I just have a, a student loan and a mortgage. And um, my credit score now is like 18. 816. So it went from How long seven, did it take? 750. It went from 650 to 816 in about three years. Three years. But it was about 700 after the first year, after I paid off all those credit cards. But it's a lot easier when you don't have a car payment. Mike was nice enough to lend me his Lexus that he wasn't using. That was sitting <laughs> so around that rusting. And I didn't have to pay for hotels anymore because we, we can car camp in his tesla oh, oh yeah and elon tesla musk camping. thanks for the electricity so they can stay warm or cold at night depending upon the time of year yeah. and then my employer started um making payments on my student loan it was a new benefit that was added so Whoa. it yeah the balance is really going down and the more those balances go down the more credit i'm allowed to have from my As, and so that's a problem account. like so, i've noticed that right i said now the temptation is now that yeah you're allowed more credit People are contacting you. They want you to get loans for this. So you're free financing on that. The temptation yeah. is to not get back into that spot. It's so easy to when your credit score starts to ratchet back up again. Yeah. I can have any car I want now, but I, I don't want one right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to wait till I have a uh, million dollars in the, my 401k. <laughs> okay, but that, so, yeah, but so, so, so getting a high credit score means you're not utilizing all your credit on purpose. And that means you're able to build wealth. That's the other thing. You can't build wealth on a low, on a, I say on a credit score below 700, it's very, very hard to build any kind of wealth because you're, you're maximizing out all your available credit. So that means your savings rate's gonna be low. You can't save a lot of money till you can't invest a lot of money. So in summary, pay your bills on time. Don't keep a balance. Don't, don't co-sign for your kids. Sleep in your car and marry up. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wait, also don't, Hold on a second. Wait, you said, wait, don't. Oh yeah, I wouldn't, my rule of thumb too, in terms of helping out family members is not until you've got your own retirement paid for, okay? Because if you don't have your own retirement paid for and you're helping out a family member or friend or whatever with your credit, even if it's not with cash, if it's with your credit, then you, it's affecting you in a negative way, it's affecting your ability. Yeah, we're we're still on, yeah we're on red. Actually, red's our red is our trail, so we're we're good. Yeah, so I would not ever recommend helping anybody. I would not focus on assisting someone else, anyone really, with their own finances until you've got your own retirement covered. It's hard enough if you're starting out and you don't have enough retirement to figure out how you're going to be able to retire, how you're going to get enough money together. So it's kind of like they say on an airplane when you're. Uh, oxygen masks drop down you put yours on first and then you help somebody else out after you know you're okay because if you're not okay it's one second later you're both going to be dead you know so um 
that's the same with your finances, I would say. Yeah, same thing with a seatbelt. You, you wear it in case your passengers don't, so you're able to save them. <laughs> if you have yours on, you're going to be good. So you do it to help others as well as yourself. So how long did it take to bring yours up from 640, that we said, to 820? Well, that took a number of years only because... What's the number of years? 20 years? Well, <laughs> it goes up a little bit every time I check it each month. <laughs> How do you so, check it? That's the other thing. How do you find out I, what your number is? You, you, I, there's free credit reports on Credit Karma, Mint. Um, if you your have Discover card, a right? Discover card, they'll give you a FICO score. Well, what's another one? There's another one, um, Credit Karma. Did you say that? I have, yeah, I said Credit okay. Karma. Okay, you said that, yeah. It, yeah, uh, everybody should have access to a free credit report. Well, Which nowadays is, it's easy. When I was starting out and you were in the, in the early 90s, it was hard uh, to get a ha your hands on a credit report. Yeah. But um, I still was watching out for mine. You want to always watch out, too. You want to get a copy of it because there may be mistakes on it. And, in fact, there are almost always mistakes on them that you have to get fixed. And especially if, like, I'm a junior, my dad's information was on my credit report, which actually helped me out because he has a good credit score. But it was affecting me in a negative way because of all these accounts that weren't mine. Yeah, <laughs> That's the other quite thing. Common. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so check all that out all the time. And that's probably, this is the key. You, you're, unless you are living a perfect lifestyle where you are never in debt, your key, I think, to building wealth is to, to maximize your credit score. Get that number as high as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can. And don't and resist the temptation to get more shit when... The number goes up because everyone's going to be knocking on your door. That's just the way it goes. They want to lend money to people that they know are going to pay it back, right? If, wouldn't you want to do that if you were in the loan business? That's who you want to give money to. But all that stuff's depreciating assets. So you want to you want to be a producer if you can, not a consumer. You want to be an investor, not a spender, not even a saver, but you want to be able to invest your money. In order to invest, saving is the first step, but then you have to get enough so that you can start investing. Sometimes that's pretty hard to do, to get enough to, uh, I know for me it was for a long time. And then you get to a certain point where you start to make enough money off your investments that, that just a couple of investments you have make enough money for you to get into another one, which is great. It's never that way when you're starting out though, unless you now you're giving Hit the investment lottery. advice, and this video is supposed to be about how to increase your credit score. Well, this is what, well, that, yeah, well, if you're struggling out there because your numbers are low, you don't even know what I'm talking about. This is what you need to get, that's the, that's the mode you need to be in if you ever expect to have a decent retirement, I would say. Baby steps. Let's make a separate video about retirement, about yeah. retirement advice. Okay, and, uh, investment and advice. if you're watching this, let me know what your credit score is. Let me know what you've done. You're, you've been able to get on loans, terms, mortgages, whatever. Let me know what you want to get to. Let me know if you've already increased your credit score, how long it took. Let me know if you destroyed your credit score and what you did so that we can learn from your mistakes. Because that's the best thing is to learn from people's mistakes. But the other good thing to do is to hang out with people that know what they're talking about. And I definitely know what I'm talking about with this, even though it can be kind of boring. Hopefully you're still with me in this video. But it's going to benefit you. Your life's going to be so much better. You'll be happier. You get to do more things. All that, which is what you want to do. So you just have to go through this work to get there. That's all. And then read the comments. I want to see what people are saying there in terms of what's going on with mistakes or good things. Hopefully more good things than bad things. But they don't teach you the stuff in school either. That's a problem. I don't understand why there's not a class on your credit score if it's so important. Getting loans, getting a mortgage. Why is this stuff not taught in school? That could be another video, I guess. All right, so what's up? if you could say one thing about it here in closing, this is from you. This is the person who has increased their score who I'm afraid might get above mine now. Now it's turned into a competition because I've got, I've got this ridiculous loan on my Tesla okay, that I gotta keep making payments on. And you know, I'm glad that I get free electricity, but the payments are pretty, pretty steep. And I was, and I, well, I'm done paying with Alexis. Alexis has paid off, thankfully. Um, and I'm, I actually, I helped my my son buy a house. I, I co-signed on that mortgage too, so that's on my credit. 
uh, I think now that I have almost 80% value in my home and my PMI is going away, I'll be able to put extra payments on my student loan and I'll soon surpass Mike. You will? <laughs> How soon? We'll see. We'll, we'll make, make a, a follow-up follow video. Yeah, when, if, if Denise ever passes me on her credit score. And if you think she will, say she will or she won't, put that in the comments. People may not know what you're talking about, but I know. And then also, let me know when, because right now it's what, almost June, it's end of May, 2020. So you've already moved a lot in a long, a short period of time. So yeah. I don't know. I don't know how long it might take. I'd say if you do, at least another year, I would think. Yeah. Because the, the progress starts to become slow after a while. It's very fast initially. And it slows down, but you're over 800, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Yeah, bye. Denise has one more thing to say. <laughs> so, if, if your credit score is in the fair category, like 650 to 680, it won't even take you a year to get to 700 if you can just pay off all your credit cards. And, and because that's what gets you the, the amount of available credit in relation to the credit utilization that is going to make one of the biggest changes in your credit score so i don't want to people to give up hope thinking that it's going to take three years to, to get where i am it will but to go from mediocre to good you can do that in less than a year if you just however long it takes you to get rid of your credit card debt the revolving debt hope that helps